Hi, this is Rebecca with ButtonMakers.net, and today we are going to go over our new Photoshop templates and uh, how to fill a page with a pattern. So the first thing that we want to do is open up a web browser and go to www.ButtonMakers.net. Um, under the resources section here, we're going to click on design templates and then click on the Photoshop link there on the right. This brings us to our blog. Um, we have the printed, uh, the written instructions and the downloads available here. Today we're going to download a uh, <coughs> one inch template for one inch button, so I'm going to click on the one inch link there and that downloads to my desktop automatically. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. Okay, so there is the uh, file that we just downloaded. It's a zip file, so I need to double click on it to unzip it and it unzips directly to my desktop and inside we have a PSD file that's a Photoshop document. <clears throat> so uh, I'm just going to double click on it and it'll open right up there in Photoshop. And uh, here we can see the components of our um, of our document here um, and I'm going to rearrange my workspace a little bit <coughs> so I can see my layers. We have a a cut line there and a face line here and some perimeter text. So the first thing I want to do is uh, add a photo to my button design. So I'm going to go up to, I'm going to open my photo and I'm going to go to File, Open. And I'm going to click on my photo that I want to open and select Open. Okay, and I could just go ahead and grab my Move tool and drag the file in and as you can see it's huge compared to my tiny little one inch button um, but uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move this below the face line so I can see I just basically have an eyeball and a little bit of nose there um, I could go to uh, edit and select transform and then scale but my the edges of this photo actually go out beyond my um, area here so I can't even see those it looks like it's not doing anything so I'm just gonna escape out of that really quick and grab my zoom tool here hold down my alt key and zoom this down to where it's very small then go to edit and select transform scale there you go now you can see where the edges of your picture are we couldn't see those before they were off the screen so then I'm going to go ahead and hold down my shift key and holding down the shift key while pulling in the corners uh, on the transform option here uh, allows me to transform to scale this down without adjusting the aspect ratio so uh, it doesn't distort the picture as I smooth it around it's just uh, it doesn't make it too fat or too skinny um, that's not perfect I just basically all I have is his face in the face and the uh, on the uh, button design here so I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, transform again now my handles are a little closer there because my picture is smaller again with the shift key down I'm gonna go ahead and drag these corners in pretty much as close to the face as I can get them because I want as much of him in there as I can um, now Keep in mind that everything that is inside this face line is going to print. The rest of this area right in here wraps around to the side of the button and somewhere in here just gets completely cut off and hidden. So I don't want a big white chunk on the side of my button. That doesn't look very nice. Um, so I'm going to fill this whole area in with gray. And I'm gonna zoom this up a little one more too so it looks nicer this is a hundred percent so uh, I'm gonna do this on a new layer because um, I don't want to do it in my cut line cut line has to stay on the top um, and uh, and we can't so we couldn't we wouldn't want to do anything with that we, we don't really want to do anything with any of these layers we want to make all of the graphical elements have their own layer in case we need to change something later so I'm going to come in here to my layers palette and by the way if your layers palette isn't showing you can you can uh, call your layers palette up by going to window layers right there. So
so here in the layers palette I'm going to go ahead and click the uh, create new layer icon down here at the bottom and I'm going to go ahead and drag this layer down below my picture so it shows up in the background then I'm going to uh, click on my eyedropper tool and click on the very edge of this gray tone right here and get that gray color. We already kind of had that gray color selected. But uh, but you can see you can use the eyedropper tool to sort of select any color in this picture. For this purpose, we're going to use gray. Then I'm going to grab my paint bucket tool. Um, and if you can't find your paint bucket, it might be behind the gradient tool. So you just click and hold on gradient and then select paint bucket. Oh, and first I need to make this into a selection right here because I don't want to fill this entire thing with gray um, because that would, when, when we printed it out, the whole entire page would be gray and it would just be a complete waste of ink. So we want to actually make this just this round circular area gray. So the way that we do that is we're going to go into our paths palette here. And again, if this isn't an option for you here, you can just go to window paths right there. Um, and we're going to click on the cut line and then we're going to click down here at this bottom button uh, load path as selection. I'm going to go ahead and click that. Now the paths are really helpful uh, in this document for a number of reasons. You can change these paths into selections or you can put uh, text along any of these paths um, or you can use the stroke path option down here to change the color of the path, like the color of this, the cut line, for example. If you were working with a graphic that had the exact same colors as gray cut line and you couldn't see the cut line, you might want to change the color and you can do that here. Um, so the paths are really cool for that purpose. Um, so now that we've got this in a selection, we need to go back to our layers and we have layer two selected here and we're just going to, with our paint bucket selected, we're just going to click inside this selected area. Um, and that went and filled in all that white space with gray. Um, the next thing we're going to do is cut off the um, these little corners here that are sticking out from the edge of our button. And um, the only reason we're doing that is because it really is a waste of ink, right? Because we're going to put this uh, design through a graphic punch and just punch it out. We could leave it but there's no real reason to leave it because it's not, you know, it's just going to get cut off anyway and it's a waste of ink. So I'm going to select my layer one there and then I'm just going to go with this selected already. I'm just going to go ahead and click on my mask uh, button down there at the bottom of my layers palette. And that gives me a nice mask uh, that's the perfect, you know, it's um, the perfect size for my buttons fits right inside the cut line. Another cool little feature about this mask is that you can actually uh, move this around. So with this, um, right now, it's, uh, it's, it indicates that the, uh, the layer and the mask are linked. So if we moved one, both of them will move. Command Z to undo that. But we can actually unlink them. And then I can just grab this uh, layer here. And you can see, like, you can move the picture around and the layer doesn't move. So we'll go ahead and relink those for now. Um, and uh, just to show you a cool little feature there, one of the ways I like to use masks in Photoshop. Um, so okay, uh, the next thing I want to do is put some text here on the face of my button. So again, we're going to call up the Paths palette, and I'm going to select the face line there. Um, so I'm going to go with black for now just to get this type in here and I'm going to select my uh, uh, type tool. Whichever color you have here is your foreground. Um, actually no, this is the color that determines the, uh, the text color. Anyway, we'll just start with black um, and the type tool. And um, to start doing text along a path, you have to make sure that you're cursoring over the path correctly. So if I were to type out here, I just get just straight text. And that's not what I want. Um, if I were to type in here, click in here, then I get type that um, stays inside the path. So I don't want either of those options. I want text to go along my path. So um, I have to cursor over the path until it turns into that little eye with the squiggle there. Um, that icon is the one that we'll use to do text along the path. 
So then, so now we've um, we you can see that the that the text actually follows the path there, but this is on the wrong side of the path, right? So this is on the outside of the face. This actually wouldn't print. The only thing that would print in here is this little area of the J, and that's no good. So we need to move it onto the inside of the face, and to do that. Uh, we select the path selection tool over here and go over to your layers. You can see there's your layer right there. Make sure that's selected. And then you cursor over the um, path until your cursor turns into little eye with the two arrows. Right? So if you had it, if it wasn't that icon, like it was just this path selection icon, it's just going to move the path around. We don't want to do that. We want to actually cursor over this type there um, and then you can just start moving it around so I'm actually holding down my mouse button to do this I've clicked on it and, dr and I can just drag it around the path and drag it inside the um, the button face there to get it to go on the face of the button so the next thing I want to do is uh, change the font color and to do that I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that this um, text layer is selected and I'm going to go to windows and select character um, and then I'm going to double click this color here and um, get a new color nice magenta um, and that looks good the other things you can do here, this is already kerned out by 50, so like if you had it at zero, you know, the letters would be smushed, and so when you're on the inside of a circular uh, uh, path like that, you might need to, you know, kern the letters out a little bit so that they, they're not smushed. And we'll go ahead and uh, reduce that palette. And uh, so then I want to, I don't want this J to get cut off because as you can see here, um, it's outside of the face line, so that means that it won't print, you know, it get, it'll wrap around to the side uh, of the button and it won't print on the face, it won't look right. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to do is just uh, move this text layer in a little bit. And I have my move tool selected, so I'm just going to nudge it with my keyboard using my left arrow. And now as you can see, uh, this text layer is no longer perfectly circular as you know along with the the edge of the button it kind of is making this sort of half moon shape and that's not so attractive so I want to fix that um, and to do that I can free transform my path so my path is actually already selected I can see that here but um, just to be sure I'm gonna go into my paths palette and I can see that Photoshop has made a new uh, path for this text Julian type path so um, I'm just going to go to edit and select free transform path and then I'm just going to start pulling in my path so that it follows this circle and I, I'm just kind of eyeballing this there's a couple of different ways to do this if you wanted to do it perfectly you could make you know a new path you could copy one of these paths and and pull it in a little bit and it would be kind of perfect but we're just gonna go for good enough today so that looks pretty good and you can see that once I uh, double clicked on the inside of that path to set the transformation um, the text just automatically uh, adjusts itself around the new path shape um, so uh, the next thing I'm going to do is get deselect this path and this is a good habit to get into um, because if you uh, if you don't do this, you know Photoshop thinks that you're still working with paths. So even though like maybe you close your path layer and you go or you close your path palette and you go over to the layers and you start you know doing stuff, if you have a path actually selected, uh, Photoshop thinks that you know, if you go to transform something, it thinks that you want to work with the path. So we want to make sure that when we leave the paths palette, we have deselected all the paths. It's just a good habit to get into. Um, so here's all our paths, and I'm just going to click down here in the blank space there of the paths palette to deselect all of them. Now we can see none of them are highlighted. Now we can go on to our layers, and Photoshop knows that whatever we do, um, we intend to do it to the layer and not the path. Um, so we are basically done with our button design here. Um, 
but you know we need to remember to delete this face line or remove this face line um, oh and I'm gonna do perimeter text too so let's go ahead and leave the face line on for now um, so the perimeter text um, is where you might put like a URL to your website or copyright like you might in this case and I can't see them because they're behind my background layer there so I'm gonna move them up there we go so they're above the picture and above background and I'm just going to select my type tool here and have to cursor over the type tool until the cursor changes to this icon right so this one will give me this icon will give me a new text layer you know that's just straight across this icon allows me to edit this text that's here the thing that says perimeter text um, so I can uh, I can just start deleting this or start typing or um, what I find to be a little bit easier is I can go to command A on my keyboard to select all of it and then I can just go ahead and put in the text that I want and this type uh, we have it set up you know it's four points uh, on an Arial font and um, that's just because this is really small small text so you wanna have it be very simple it's very hard to read on the button especially if you've got some busy background it's pretty tough to read um, so it's a good idea to uh, keep this very very simple a very simple font like Arial, Verdana, Helvetica, something like that and uh, make it as contrasty as possible too so it's a gray right now so that it shows up on a you know the most uh, a number of different backgrounds but I think I want to go ahead and make it white so <clears throat> I am gonna go back to my uh, character palette here and change the color to white and now you notice that I select my move tool before I did that that was just to deselect the uh, blinking cursor that was in the middle of my type um, if I had had that blinking cursor on and went to my character palette, it actually would not change my uh, color. It, it basically assumes that I only want to change like one letter or whatever I have selected. Um, so if you don't have anything selected and you have the entire type layer here uh, in the layers palette highlighted, and when you go to the characters palette, it'll actually do a global change. I can go over that again if you missed it. So I'll just undo my changes here. And so I had my blinking cursor in here. If I were to go to character now and change the color, see it doesn't do anything, right? Because there's nothing actually selected. I could change one color by selecting this type or change one letter by selecting the type. So hopefully that sort of clears up what I just did. Sorry, I kind of moved through this program a little quickly sometimes. So. I want to go ahead and uh, change the color to white, so I'm going to do that. And again, I could change the kerning out a little bit if I needed to space out these letters. It might be important for legibility again because this is very, very small. It looks very crisp and clear on the screen, but once you get that mylar on there, and it's it's tiny, so be very careful there. Um, all right, so and do a test first. Always print one of these out and test it out. Um, I'm going to go to my upper perimeter text there, type, click in there, command A, um, option G on my keyboard to do a copyright symbol on a Mac in Photoshop, and uh, then see, I deselected my little blinking cursor, and I'm going to change this to, oops, did I get it selected right? And then white. Another little thing I do sometimes on this perimeter text to make it stand out a little bit is I will add a um, a layer style and it's usually a stroke, you know. So like if my um, my background was really busy um, and it was going to be hard to read this white type, I might just go ahead and add a black outline around it, you know, pretty small one usually, something like that. You know, that helps the legibility factor. In this case, it's really not necessary because that gray is pretty solid and that's just pretty dark and black, so I think this I'll be fine here. Alright, so we are completely done with our button design. 
as you'll notice, this face line here it says delete before printing. Um, you don't actually have to delete it, but you do need to turn it off. You don't want that to print at all. It looks bad. So don't, so um, you can leave it in there. Like you can, you don't have to delete it. You can leave it on. You just have to turn the little eyeball off. Um, and you might want to do that in case, like for example, if you wanted to set up a design uh, to where you wanted to swap out the picture or something like that, you would want to leave, you would want to have your face line available so you can see, you know, uh, what elements of your design are going to show up on the face of your button, but you want to turn it off um, when you're all done. So that's it. Our face line is off. Our cut line is still on. That's key. <laughs> We've got another line here that's another cut line. Um, so you want to leave that on and on top. And then we'll go ahead and hit File, Save As, <clears throat> and we'll give this a name. Okay, and now we're going to set this as a pattern. So you go to Edit and select Define Pattern, give it a name, click OK. And now we're going to open up our page document. So uh, we'll go up here to File and select Open. I'm sorry not file open, file new. It's file and select new. Um, and then we are going to set the width to 8 inches, the height to 10 inches, and the resolution to uh, 300 ppi. And the 300 ppi uh, pixels per inch is really important because um, the template that we just worked on is also 300 uh, ppi and so they have to be the same pixels per inch in order for the inches to relate to each other properly. Um, so just remember that, and the reason that we're using um, 8x10 is so that you can print out an 8.5x11 sheet of paper without cutting off any of your graphics. So we'll go ahead and click OK. There, and this will open. OK, there's our page. And um, to fill this with our pattern, we just go to Edit and select Fill, and we want to... Um, this will probably start off on foreground color or something like that. So you want to uh, drop this menu down and select pattern from the drop down menu and then drop the custom pattern drop down down. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and click the last one. That's the last one you did. And click OK. And that automatically fills in a page with uh, all your button designs. And these are your strips for uh, running the page, uh, running the strips through the graphic punch. And this makes it really easy and um, simple. So hopefully that's helped. You're ready, ready now to uh, print this out. You can just go to File Print or uh, export this as a PDF and take it on to, to Kinko's. But um, yeah, we're pretty much done. So there you go.